Hi there, welcome to end to end solution architect session today. Today I'll be showing you how to load data from the clean zone to data warehouse. In our case, the data warehouse is Amazon Redshift. So basically, if you are following our data lake series, you know that we have already created AWS Glue Job to transform and load data from raw zone to clean zone. Now it is the phase where we will be creating glue job to transform and load from clean zone to Amazon Redshift. Now so far you also know that how we created a cluster in Amazon Redshift and we have already a table created with some dummy data. Now before I take you to the next part, let me tell you that if you are interested in IT role based skill development in the technologies like AWS Cloud Practitioner, Azure Fundamental, Cloud Digital Leader or Terraform, then you can visit our website e2esolutionarchitect.com or drop a note to contact us at e2esolutionarchitect.com. We will be happy to help you. And secondly, if you are interested in in-person bootcamp session, so in coming summer, we are organizing few in-person bootcamp on AWS and Microsoft Azure, where we will be talking about and guiding about solution architecture, design and implementation of industry standard business cases which will cover infrastructure, networking, security, DevOps, all related to your cloud AWS and Microsoft Azure. Let's jump into our session. Now, in this session, I'll be talking about data load from clean zone to atomic zone. In our atomic zone, we have our data warehouse, which is Amazon Redshift, and we will be loading this data through the ETL job and ETL service in AWS is AWS Glue. Our purpose as I said again transform and load clean data to data warehouse. Create a service role for AWS Glue. Next create crawler for S3 clean zone. Again we have to create a separate crawler for Redshift. The fourth one is create AWS glue job for data load to Redshift and ultimately we will be executing the glue job. Now let me explain the flow how it actually works. So as you see in this diagram that we have our clean zone which is nothing but S3 bucket. Now we need to transform and load our data which is basically in CSV in our case it can be JSON CSV or any other format to Amazon Redshift. Now when we are creating a glue job there are two things required. The first one is we have to create crawler for S3. The purpose of this crawler is that the crawler for S3 will analyze the data which is sitting in S3 and will find the schema automatically. So you do not need to define the schema manually. So the job of the crawler is analyze the data sitting in S3 and define the schema automatically. The next part is we have to define another crawler for Redshift. And the reason is this crawler will analyze the schema in Redshift table. So basically whatever we are taking the schema from our S3 bucket we will be loading into Amazon Redshift schema. So the purpose of these two crawler is that they will analyze automatically the schema for these two entities S3 bucket and Redshift table. And you see this two databases which is basically the temporarily created database which crawler needs and that is one for crawler S3DB another for crawler Redshift DB. 
and when we have this two crawler created and executed we will be creating a glue job basically this job will now transfer the data from clean zone to amazon redshift once we execute that job now let's go to the practical part i am logged into my amazon management console the first thing let me show you the s3 in our previous session we created this s3 structure as you know that we have this raw zone and clean zone in single s3 bucket we are talking about transferring or loading data from clean zone to data warehouse so let's go to clean zone inside clean zone we have streaming data where we have the clean data from raw zone so going inside that and we see that we have this file already created because this file was created when we did the etl job from raw zone to clean zone now if i download this file to show you that what is the format how it looks like what is the data basically let me open that so it's nothing but a csv data clean data and it's showing that username user location user description and so on well so this is our data format we know that this is a clean data and in csv format comma separated value format okay now let's go to redshift search for redshift over here we have the cluster already created click over the cluster name on the left hand panel click over query editor v2 here is our cluster name inside cluster we have our database that is etvsa rsdb inside database we have the schema it is public schema and the tables currently we have two tables but we will be using one table where we will be populating our data and the table name is etvsa twitter messages okay. now as you see that uh, currently the table is empty at this moment because we have not loaded any data into data warehouse well so what we have to do first that we have to create that glue service role let's go to search for im click on role click create role keep it selected aws service search for blue select blue click next now here it is asking to add permissions see this blue job basically will pull the data from s3 and will push it to amazon redshift so basically we need this to permission for sure so amazon s3 i'm adding full access but when you are using um, it in your organization or for production purpose definitely do not add full access then you tune uh, the policy okay now redshift it is also redshift full access and since it will work with glue i'm just adding the glue full access as well as glue service role okay clicking on next just giving a name so tvsa glue demo role add a tag it is a good practice to add a tag suppose project tvsa data lake demo zero one click on create role And our role has been created so if we go by this glue and it should show us etvsa glue demo role well so our first task is done the next one is let's go to aws glue search for glue over here click on glue now this time let's create a classifier first 
So on the left hand side, if you click on data catalog, let's go to classifier, click on add classifier. The purpose of this classifier is to let glue know which kind of file we are trying to transform or load. Okay, so here the classifier type in our case it is CSV, comma separated value, column delimiter is comma. Okay, column heading detect heading because in our file we have the column, so it will it should automatically detect and click on create. That's it. Okay, now our classifier has been created. Now let's go to crawler because we have to create two crawlers right so click on crawlers click on create crawlers let me give a name of this call crawler as it is a demo crawler s3 clean so it means that the crawler will actually analyze s3 clean zone this is the identification for the readability okay so we can add a tag over here what is that project you see data lake demo 01 click for the next now we have to add a data source okay so click over the data source our data source is s3 bucket so let this be selected the location of this s3 bucket is same in this account if it is different account select the different account now we have to select the s3 part so click on browse and select the particular s3 bucket so here is our S3 bucket E2ESA data like demo 01. So we will be going into clean zone and then streaming data. Basically all the clean data for the streaming resources we are storing there. Okay. Click on choose and now it is showing red. So just enter one slash. That's it. Okay. Crawl all subfolders let it be whatever is by default over here click on add an s3 data source now our data source has been added let's click on next okay so just i'm going back once again so it is showing that custom classifier so since we created this classifier to let glue know that which kind of file will be transferring so let's add this classifier over here and it is optional if you have not created the classifier that's fine click on next okay now this is the existing im role where glue will be using it to pull data from s3 so it must be glue service role which has the permission for s3 in our case we have just created this one okay now click on next okay now the target database as i said let me open the diagram once again we have created this crawler we are still creating this crawler for s3 so crawler needs a temporary database so that's why we will be creating crawler s3db and then same way when we will be creating the crawler for redshift we will be creating a temporary db for crawler redshift db so clicking on add database just giving a name it will be as a glue db s3 clean okay to make it readable click on create database now give a refresh over here just on this button so the target database should come and we have this it we glue db s3 clean database over here as we are not using any prefix for the table name i am not adding it it is optional you do not need to add crawler schedule make it on demand because we will be triggering it manually in our future session we will be showing you that how you can set it automatic by trigger so when the first job which cleans the data it will arrive in your clean zone and how it will sense and it will automatically trigger this particular glue job okay so now click over next it is just the summary page create crawler the crawler has been successfully created now our 
purpose is to run that crawler first the reason of running this crawler is that now it will analyze what's in that s3 bucket and how is the schema for that data so click over run crawler and it will take some time so let's go back to our crawler and you see that it has started running it will take few minutes meanwhile we can start creating the crawler for the redshift so meanwhile i am just copying this name to create the similar crawler for redshift click on create crawler just changing this name redshift tags project click on next now again we have to add a data source and this time this data source is for the redshift so click on add data source select jdbc and we have to select we have to add a connection okay now let me create this new connection over here although we have the existing connection from before okay let me give the name of this connection red shift connection and this connection will be particularly for that uh, message table that's why i given this name okay connection type is amazon redshift now we have to mention the database instance we have already so this is our cluster name our database name is i have added the database name username and password and click on create connection so our connection has been created just let's go back and refresh this connection and we should have our etsa rs connection message okay now here it's saying that you have to include the path how this database slash schema slash table name so let me put it over here let me take you to the redshift here is our cluster inside cluster we have database inside database we have schema which is public and inside public we have the tables okay so in our case this is our database this is our schema and this is our table now so i'm just copying it over and we'll format it yes so database schema and table name. okay database schema and table name. and we are done over here okay additional metadata optional we are not adding anything just added this one click on add jdbc data source okay here we have added this classifier since we have already created so i'm just selecting the classifier it is also the csv type click on next now adding this im role which is saying that the glue must have access to redshift so the service role should be glue and it must have the permission for redshift access we created recently this etsa glue demo which has the redshift access as well so i have just selected clicking on next okay now here also as i said that the crawler will have a temporary database that's why we have to create one temporary database over here so i'm clicking on add database just giving a name it is e2esa demo or e2esa crawler redshift db just giving this name e2esa glue db redshift clicking on create database the database has been created let's go back give a refresh over here and just select the redshift database okay again the crawler is on demand okay let it be click on next this is the summary page only click on create crawler now the crawler has been created as we know that after we create the crawler 
we have to run the crawler so it can analyze the schema now this crawler redshift will analyze the schema of the redshift table basically so if you see that our redshift this is our table structure over here so it will analyze this table structure and will create the schema automatically into this okay so let's click on run crawler remember that in this case when you are running this crawler your table the structure of this table must be present in your redshift so that's why it will particularly take your table to analyze the schema data is not required but the table definition should exist click over run crawler let's go to crawler our previous crawler which was for s3 showing ready and now this one for crawler redshift is showing running okay so meanwhile let's go to the tables and check for the s3 crawler table now what happens when crawler executes it creates a table and the table means the glue table which basically shows that what is the schema it has analyzed so on the left side under databases click over tables and as you see that we have many other tables already created how to identify that is that you will check the database so in our case our database was etvsa glue db s3 clean so the corresponding table name it has by default created streaming data so click over that this is how you identify that which table is, has been created for that particular crawler so it is the table overview and if you scroll down the schema shows here see the schema from the s3 data it has analyzed that it has this 13 columns and the partition 0 it takes now if the column names are username user location description and and it also analyzes the data type and here the data type is string big int boolean string so you can verify whether it has correctly analyzed the schema or not what if in your case that you find that the data type it has analyzed it is not the one which is actually so you click over this ad schema okay select that particular one as you see that in this case the date is showing data type string okay so you can select this one click over edit and just change that date from date okay now i am uh, i am not changing this because i am keeping this date as a string because in our data the date is actually in timestamp but still i am not also changing this timestamp in our next session when we will be actually transforming the raw input data i will show more into the data types in that session okay so let it be over there but this is the purpose of showing this that you can edit if the schema is not good as you wanted well so this is the table created for s3 and we will be having another one shortly okay now meanwhile this one also created so you see this etusa glue db redshift has been created so let's go over here and scroll down again you find that the same way it has been created okay it has also the data type you can check that whether it has analyzed the same data type as you have in your um, uh, redshift table so how you can do it very quickly is that you click on the table right click over here show table definition so if you do this table definition you will get it in the code the complete definition or just call down over here and see this this is the field and this is the type you have over here now let's go back so our both the so our both the crawlers have been executed so let's going back and this is the time we'll be creating the etl job so let's click on etl job on the left hand side 
here we are on the job creation page in our case what will happen that it will take from s3 and it will load into redshift that's why i'm selecting the target as redshift now i'm keeping it visual with a source and target and clicking on create so it has given us a template visual template it is called you click over this s3 bucket because this is the source now it is asking the source s3 source type so it is our so s3 source type is the one which is our clean zone okay so browse that clean zone streaming data folder i have selected data like demo 01 clean zone and streaming data choose okay and you see this recursive it will take all the subfolders from here okay now this part is done we have selected this source now coming to this mapping over here so as you see that transform applying mapping it is not showing or output schema is also not showing so let's go back to s3 so you choose the data catalog table so once you choose the data catalog table this is the table actually the crawler has created understanding or analyzing the schema so if you select this s3 location here you have to map it manually you have to create this thing manually the map okay but when i'm selecting this data catalog table okay and you select the database which is basically s3 clean the glue temporary database and select the table which it has created the streaming data name of the table was streaming data then when we come over here and we see that the schema which it has analyzed by the crawler it is already there so you just verify the schema over here and the target key and the data type so it means that source key which is actually the data data key in your s3 bucket and this is the target key which is actually the target going to be in your red ship table okay so username is mapping to username user location is mapping to user location and so on okay and all the data types are over here now you will find that there are few which is user followers are actually integer so big in so just go by this big int user friends are big int favorites are big int okay user verified is basically the boolean you, you can open your uh, input data and you can check that which kind of variable are they still as i said that i am keeping date as string text is string hashtag is string source is string is tweet is actually boolean and it is very important that you verify this mapping and the data type if mapping is okay but the data type mapping is actually incorrect it, you will find that the data is not loaded in your red chip so please give attention in this part that you have to map or correct this mapping very carefully source key target key and the data type so we have all this date user created is basically the date but still i am keeping it as string followers are integer i have just changed changed it verified is boolean and this retweet is boolean now i am clicking over save before keeping it over save let me give it this job in name suppose it we say demo loading job okay so at this point i'm just clicking over this save as it's saying this job has not saved so i just click over saved now we have these two green ticks we have now that second one the next one is basically uh, this red shift cluster where we have to select the red shift crawler db so this is one the crawler db we created let's select the table this is the crawler db table selected insert only at this point i'm just selecting insert only okay this one also got green tick clicking over 
save and you see that we have got one error over here it is not errors the we have to set the role over here just selecting this role so it means that the role must have the permission to get data from s3 and push it to redshift so we have this role already defined again clicking on save and you see that everything is green successfully updated i'm going to the visual once again and this is our time for testing okay so let's go to our um, this table once again and i'm double clicking over here giving a try that whether do we have any data over here or not so we don't have any data over here let's go back and click on run once you clicked on run it shows that successfully started job go to this run tab and here you will find the status is run it is running okay and if you scroll down a bit you will find that cloud watch continuous logs but it is still it has just started so the log has not started at this point but in few minutes it will start it usually take few minutes but it will show the um, uh, status of the run over here you can refresh if you want it but it will change of its one so let's wait for few minutes once it's completed and if you scroll down you will find that once the log starts generating in cloudwatch as you see that the log started generating in cloudwatch and started showing over here well now it took around 1 minute 46 seconds and the job status is showing succeeded okay so let's go to our redshift table and just run this select statement and let's see what happened and you see that it has populated the data correctly from our s3 bucket or means the clean zone in s3 bucket so whatever the data we had it has successfully loaded in our data warehouse so all the data has been loaded properly and if you go back once again you will find that if you want to check the logs how it is the driver logs shows here and for the detail log in actually cloudwatch you can go for all logs output logs or error logs from here and here is the run status of every runs for this particular job okay i hope so far you have understood that how can you create the crawlers temporary database create this etl job or aws glue job and how it pulls the data from s3 basically and loads it to your amazon redshift table if you are following our aws data lake series then you must be knowing that we have completed few parts of this multi approach or combined design so this part where you see that clean zone to atomic zone where we have our redshift or the data warehouse we are now able to load data from clean zone to redshift in other session you will find that how are we integrating tableau which is a visualization tool with the redshift so the data we have loaded into the redshift we can create the visualization in tableau or in microsoft power bi so please stay tuned for the next and upcoming session to understand the end-to-end -end aws data lake this diagram shows multi approach combined design thank you for your time if you have any query please feel free to write in the comment box or email us at contact us at e2esolutionarchitect.com please feel free to visit our website e2esolutionarchitect.com or if you are interested in any it role based training or certification focused training please drop us a note at contact us at e2esolutionarchitect.com Thank you for your time. See you in our next session.